Hey, hey, and welcome back to another learning Java 2D game programming video. So in our last video, we made some information pop up that is useful for us. So now we can see how many moving entities are healthy and how many are sick. And to test this out, uh, we've just said that if we collide with an NPC, they become healthy. So just colliding with them will make them healthy. And you can see how that updates there in our information containers. But currently, when we start out, everybody's sick. And that's not what we want. So in this video, we are going to be implementing spreading disease. So we're not going to want everyone to be sick. We only want a few to be sick to begin with. And we want to see that the numbers of sick go up and the numbers of healthy go down. So let's get to it. The first thing I want to do is to go into the game state where we initialize our characters. And down here where we initialize our NPCs, we are making them all sick and we don't want to do that. So just remove that. However, we want a few to be sick. Make number of NPCs sick. All right, and then pass in 10. So let's create that method. Uh, sick. Number of NPCs to make sick. All right, so this is a very long name, which means that I can probably think of a better name we can probably just call this number since uh, since in the method name we already say what we're doing. So, um, all right. So what we probably do now is you know we use the game object since we're in a state. We have the game objects here, and what we'd most likely do is go make a stream. Then we filter the ones that are NPCs, like the game object is an instance of NPC. I know this isn't correct. I'm just showing what we would be doing and then we'd map it to an NPC and down here we'd be able to start doing what we actually wanted to do and I feel like we're gonna do a lot of this so I'm actually gonna make a helper method inside of our state so I'm gonna make a generic method that will filter and map game objects for us so start by making public and let's give it something it'll be generic type so a T but it still needs to be of game object, right? So get game, sorry, that this is the type. And then we, of course, need to give it the return type. So a list of T and then call it get game objects as or um, of class, get game objects of class. And then you send in what class you want. So a class of type T class. All right, now we can do this only once in here and then we don't have to do it everywhere all the time. Okay, so we say return game object stream filter game object um, class is instance game object. And I think this can actually be, no, okay, I thought I think this can be a method reference, can't it? We should be able to write class is instance. And since it takes in one um, argument, which is a game object, which is what we use every time we go through filter. So that should be fine. Um, that should mean the same thing that we just wrote. But so now that when we know that, we can make a map. So game object, and let's just say t game object and then collectors to list. So this should do what we wrote before in here. So we don't have to do it every time. Now we can just say get game objects of class, say npc.class, and then do a stream. And now we already have a stream of NPCs, right? So now we only have to limit it to the number that we sent in and then say for each. So these NPCs we want to make sick, right? So NPC, NPC add effect new sick. All right, this should do it. Now we should see that 10 NPCs are sick and 191 are healthy. So that worked out just as expected. 
which is cool. However, we haven't implemented the infection yet, or the spreading of the disease, so this number won't change. Unless we walk around and find them and, you know, manage to make them all healthy, but we're not doing that now. That could take forever, who knows. All right, so the way that we're doing this is we're finding the cough action, because the cough action is the one that will be doing the work when we cough, then we want to calculate, we want to find the NPCs nearby or the moving entities maybe even if we want our player or if we have any other class that we want to be able to infect. Um, so we get the ones um, in close proximity and then we calculate should they get infected by some threshold. So let's get to that. The first thing we want to do is we want to keep a size that will be the area, sp maybe spread area size, perhaps. Uh, okay, and we need to set that to something. So I'm going to set spread area size to a new size, which is going to be, I'm thinking maybe two times game dot sprite size. So basically two uh, tiles away. Does that seem like a good enough? I don't know, let's try that. Two game tiles away uh, will be the size of which we can spread. All right, and in here, uh, we don't need to set a position here because the position will depend on the moving entity doing the coughing. We're, we're using that position. So what we want to do now, instead of just lifespan in seconds, decrementing it like this, I'm thinking we only want to do this check once when we cough. So this cough will live for 60 updates and we don't want to be able to spread every single update. I think we should only do it once. So per cough, which lives for a second, we're only doing the checking once if we're spreading or not. And why not do it the last time? That way, we don't need to keep a boolean if we already did it or not. And since it only lives for a second, I feel like it's okay to do it the last time. So let's do it like this. Instead, let's use the minus before lifespan in seconds. So that, wa that way it will be decremented and we will look at the value after it's been decremented. So if that is less than or equal to zero, it should never be less than, but you know. Uh, okay, so if statement has an empty body, yes, thank you. I know. So what we want to do now is we want to create a collision box that will be the area which we will find people in. So we already have the size, but we need the position. So let's make a new position and call it spread area position. And let's import it new position and I'm just going to open it up because we want to know the entity get position get x but we want to subtract half of this size so that we get it around our moving entity otherwise it'll start in the top left corner as usual so let's just say spread area size get width and then divide it by two and then let's do the same for the Y, but with a height instead. So let's make a collision box. So let's do collision box and let's call it spread area. And let's use our collision box of method that we made and it takes in the position. So spread area position and the spread area size. All right, now we want to find which moving entities are colliding with the spread area. So to do that, let's use the method that we just made, saying state get game objects of class, and I'm going to use moving entity dot class and do a stream. So now we have the moving entities. I'm already liking that I don't have to do the filter map filter thing. So 
what we want to do now is we still want to filter, but this time with, let's say, moving entity, we want to see if this moving entity, get collision box, collides with our spread area. So after we've gone through this filter step, we will have the moving entities that are colliding with our spread area. So that's awesome. So we want to loop through them for each. And then let's do some curly braces because we're doing an entire function here. And now let's make something called a fallout, I guess. The fallout from this math.random, uh, which as we all know, gives a value between zero and one in decimals. So now we want to check if this fallout is less than the risk. Let's actually make that. Maybe we'll just do it like this. We'll keep a risk in here. Uh, where do we want to keep that? Let's just do it here. So private double risk. And let's say the risk is 1 in 10. So the risk is 0 0.1. So if this random gives us something below 0 0.1, then you are out of luck. So if fallout is below risk, then sorry, my dear sir, but add effect music. All right. And that should be it. I feel like we don't even need this. It's, well, maybe if we want it for readability purposes, but we're not using it for anything else. All right, let's try that out. Let's see if it worked. So there are 10 sick and 191 healthy. And so, Oh, look at that. Oh, are you seeing that? <gasps> we are spreading disease. I don't know if this is a good thing, but uh, it works. Our logic works. So yay for us. We're going to have to spend time later uh, finding good values uh, so that it becomes a game that you can actually play. Uh, Right now, I feel like you're being kind of overrun and their coughing animations aren't that easy to spot. So we're probably gonna have to do something larger eventually so it's easier to spot them. Otherwise, this game is going to be too hard. But um, we are done with today's video. We are spreading disease. And I guess if you're fast enough, you could possibly find them and bump into them and make them healthy. Uh, but I feel like this is a losing battle currently. All right, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, Don.